Advanced Voltage Offset was first introduced on the Comet Lake architecture in 2020 and obviously also made it to Alder Lake. It is more commonly known as the VF points and it's an extension of the adaptive voltage mode which we have discussed many times over on the Scatterbencher channel. Advanced Voltage Offset exposes some of the points on the VF curve to the end user and allows for a manual adjustment of these points. The only requirement for the VF curve is monotonicity. Following a monotonic function, as a rule, the voltage for a given CPU ratio must be equal to or higher than the next lower ratio. So the voltage for 48x must be equal to or higher than 47x. The main purpose of advanced voltage offset is to provide end users with the ability to undervolt their CPUs at specific parts of the VF curve. In addition to undervolting, this feature also allows overvolting. This is particularly useful when manual overclocking and when you're trying to increase the maximum frequency. The advanced voltage offset function is commonly used in two ways. One, to configure a positive voltage offset for the highest VF point. This helps achieve a higher single threaded boost frequency. Two, to configure a negative voltage offset for the second highest VF point. This helps achieve lower voltage for the all-core boost, which results in a lower temperature for the all-core boosts, and thus potentially additional overclocking headroom. On Alder Lake, this approach is a bit more trickier than on Rocket Lake, because the advanced voltage offset feature is a little bit more complicated. And yeah, I've gotten it wrong in previous videos. A comment on my Scatterventure blog made me revisit the documentation I have on this video and yeah, I definitely made some mistakes. So it's time to set the record straight. Here's the deal. For Alder Lake CPUs, there are a total of 11 VF points available for the CPU P cores. Each VF point is associated with a specific CPU ratio on the voltage frequency curve. VF points 1 to 6 are each unique and associated with a ratio below the maximum default turbo ratio. VF point 7 is also unique and is associated with the maximum default turbo ratio. VF points 8 to 10 are copies of VF point 7 and may be used for future products. VF point 11 is the final unique point and is associated with the OC ratio. We've talked a lot about the OC ratio when we're discussing adaptive voltage mode. When we're using adaptive voltage mode, the voltage that we set in the BIOS is mapped against this OC ratio. When you leave everything at default, the OC ratio is the default maximum turbo ratio plus one. In the case of the 12900KF, the default maximum turbo ratio is 52X, which is the turbo boost max 3.0 frequency. So the default OC ratio is 52 plus one, 53X. When you manually overclock, the OC ratio is the highest ratio you configure across all of your settings, including turbo ratios, per core ratio limits, and OC TVB. Now, let's return to the VF points. On the Core i9-12900KF, the VF points are by default configured as follows. Now let's go over some of the intricacies of this feature. We will discuss four topics direct and indirect control of the VF curve, programming issues with VF.7 to 10, the Core i9 VF.7 ratio being 53x and not 52x, and on the Torpedo EKX, the final VF point in the BIOS being VF.7. The advanced voltage offset feature gives you both direct and indirect control over your CPU's voltage frequency curve. You have direct control over the voltage applied to each of the ratios associated with a VF point. For the 12900KF, that means direct control of the voltage for ratios 8x, 18x, 36x, 40x, 42x, 48x, and 53x. Note that the direct control is still limited as you cannot set a specific voltage, but just an offset to the factory fused voltages for these points. For the last point, VF.11, point you have direct control over both the ratio and voltage, including the ability to set the desired target voltage. You can set the voltage when using the adaptive voltage mode in the BIOS. You only have indirect control over the voltage for the ratios in between those VF points, 
And that's because the voltage for those ratios is interpolated between the previous VF point and the next VF point. To illustrate this, let's have a look at the default voltages for the VF points of my Core i9-12900KF processor. The voltages you see in the table are the factory fused values for this specific CPU sample. Not only will you get different values for different CPUs, every P core inside your CPU has its own values for these points. We can demonstrate this by having only one P core enabled and the seven others disabled. Then check the voltage for a specific ratio. Since all P cores share the same voltage rail, VCCIA, which is also shared with the E cores and the ring, the rule for the VCCIA voltage rail is to set the highest of all requested voltages. That's why we see for 54X, when all cores are active, a voltage of 1.406 volt, as it is the highest of all P cores. Now let's check the voltages for ratios in between those VF points. We'll first do an estimate based on the assumption that the interpolation is linear between the two VF points, and then we'll check the actual value as well. We do this for ratios 27, 41, and 45. As you can see, our estimated voltage is very close to the actual real world value. In order to demonstrate that we have, in fact, indirect control over the voltage of those ratios in between the VF points, let's do a little experiment. We can change the voltage offset of a VF point and see how it impacts the voltages of the ratios around that VF point. For example, here's what happens when we add a plus 300 millivolt offset to VF point 3. We can make a couple of observations. The voltages for ratios 8x and 18x are unaffected, as they have a factory fused value. The voltage for 27x is affected as it is interpolated between VF point 2 for 18x and VF point 3 for 36x. The voltages for ratios 40x, 41x, 42x and 45x have increased because the monotonicity rule of the voltage frequency curve. Even though the factory fused voltage for 42x is 1.018 volt, the actual voltage is 1.196 volt because we have manually set 36x to 1.196 volt via the advanced voltage offset. The voltage for a given ratio cannot be lower than the voltage of a lower ratio. Hence, the voltage for 42x must be equal to or higher than the voltage for 36x. The voltage for 48x and 53x are unaffected because their factory fused default voltage is equal to or higher than the voltage of 36x. We can do the same for another VF point. For example, let's try to offset VF point 5 mapped against 42x by 300 millivolts. Again, we see the same behavior. The voltage for 41x has increased because it is interpolated between 40x and 42x, and we increase the voltage for 42x. The voltage for 42x has increased because we added a voltage offset. The voltage for 45x and 48x has increased because the monotonicity rule states that the voltage must be equal to or higher than the next lower ratio. So the voltage is set equal to the voltage for 42x. I hope that these examples have made it very obvious to you that the advanced voltage offset feature is a very powerful tool to both direct and indirectly impact the CPU's voltage frequency curve. As I mentioned already, Alder Lake has more VF points than Rocket Lake, as the amount of VF points has increased from 7 to 11. However, those additional points 8, 9, and 10 don't really have that much use on Alder Lake because they're simply copies of VF point 7. Furthermore, these copy points add extra layers of programming complexity. For example, the CPU does not like it when VF.7 is programmed to a lower value than VF.8. If you want to undervolt the CPU at VF.7, so use a negative voltage offset, it is necessary to first program VF.8 with a negative voltage offset. Similarly, if you want to program VF.8 with a positive offset, you must first program VF.7 positive. More generally, if you want to configure VF.7 with a negative offset, then the best practice is to first program point 10 
then 0.9, then 8, and finally VF0.7 to the same negative value. If you want to program a positive value, then you go the other way around. If all this sounds very complicated, then you're right. Fortunately, motherboard engineers have the ability to implement all the rules in the BIOS that do all the hard work for you. However, it appears that Z690 is kind of a difficult platform because of all the DDR5 stuff that's going on. So I'm not sure to what extent all of the motherboards have the correct other rules set in place. I'm sure many of you have noticed that on my 12900KF, VF.7 is mapped against 53X. That's odd, because as we remember, the Intel rule is that VF.7 should be mapped against the highest default turbo ratio, and VF.11 is mapped against the OC ratio. So we'd expect that on the 12900KF processor, VF.7 should be mapped against 52X, and VF.11 should be mapped against 53X and higher. It appears the reason may be that this is a remnant of the original target specification of the Core i9 Alder Lake CPU. Early Alder Lake leaks had the 12900K maximum boost frequency match its predecessor, the 11900K, at 5.3 GHz. It kind of appears as if the specification of the 12900K and 12900KF changed very last minute, and that change didn't quite make it into the advanced voltage offset feature. So I'm putting the finishing touches on my video, and if you would just send me a screenshot of his BIOS where the Core i9 shows a VF.7 of 52X, that's actually correct. That's the maximum default turbo ratio. So turns out that it seems like Intel has fixed the VF point on newer Core i9 CPUs. Yeah, so if it wasn't already complex enough, this adds another layer to it. While most motherboard vendors have implemented the advanced voltage offset feature in the BIOS in some form or another, the implementation is not always the same. On Torpedo EKX BIOS version A21, there are a total of seven configurable VF points. The last configurable point is VF point seven, which is mapped against 53X. When configuring this point, the BIOS programs VF.7 to VF.11 with the same voltage offset. This has two implications. One, it ensures that the complicated programming rules are taken care of. So, as a user, you don't have to worry about any of the complicated rules. Two, it does not allow the user to program a separate voltage offset for the OC ratio, which can be independently controlled by VF.11. Instead, the voltage offset for CPU ratios 53x and above will be the same. Ideally, we'd like to have control over the final VF point as well, as that would enable us to undervolt the curve at 53x for possibly lower all-core voltage and still use overvolting for our high-frequency ratios. Mm -hmm.